Well, and, and that's before the, the full-blown campaign has actually <clears throat> yeah. come about. I mean, you know, I think, I don't think many in the community really understand or know about exactly what the Rural Residency Program is and how we can help contribute to the effort. So th that's why we're really doing these kinds of uh, educational opportunities mm -hmm. to, to share that information with our Big Island community. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, just an anecdotal uh, issue, which is, you know, really made my heart feel good is that my neighbor uh, in Volcano uh, was driving by and we were talking a little bit about health care, but he's a member of the Rotary, one, one of the Rotary clubs, I think yes. in the, the morning club. And you know, he told me that they did a fundraiser, I, I think it was a steak fry or, or, or huli huli chicken or something, mm -hmm. and that they, they decided to, to donate the entire proceeds from that effort to this rural residency program. And so, you know, that really is yes. an indication to me that there's growing um, knowledge about this and that there's efforts that just people are reaching into their own pockets to do this thing, so. If I could mention uh, some other examples of what you just said. Mm -hmm. uh, another Rotary is, is having, uh, it's, it's a lunch or a breakfast, it's an event, it's gonna be on Coconut Island, and all the proceeds from that event, they're gonna donate to the residency program. Oh. Uh, Nimmer Tamini, he is uh, one of the co-owners of Atbar Chips. He's going to do donate 10% of his sales from gift baskets and his store to this program. We had uh, someone, uh, an individual who lives in the community. A lot of people have called just stepping up to help, but it does come down to money. An individual called and said, uh, I'd like to help if you could get one of the docs to come speak at a cocktail party and have it at my house. I'm going to invite people. They're going to write a check. It might not be a, a lot, but it's going to go to the pool. They're going to have that event. Uh, uh, a lot of people are stepping up in creative ways. You know, let me just echo what Russell said because it, it, it is heartwarming. Mm -hmm. But it's not only heartwarming, it's, it's sort of exciting. I mean, it you is. know, all of these examples are just further validation of the need for such such an essential yeah. service you know to our community and therefore I think we really appreciate the kind of efforts you folks are making because I think right now uh, you know when when we got, when we first uh, um, got wind of you know the kind of uh, positive work you were doing um, I mean it, you know uh, Senator Kokubu you know for the Big Island uh, Senate team uh, led the way in terms of you know trying to draft uh, a resolution so that we can work yes, thank you. hand in hand yeah. with you but but maybe before we get to that Maybe you can set the stage for us a little bit more in terms of the kind of organizational efforts and the kinds of you know team building that you folks have already played a major leadership role in helping to to set up. I think um, there's been a tremendous effort amongst the board of trustees to really volunteer and try to look at different ways to creative ways to. Uh, fundraise, which we never did before. Uh, Dr. Santiago's husband, for example, Dr. Kevin Wilcox, yes. he has stepped up to the plate and he said, you know, it wouldn't be really nice if people don't, he doesn't matter whether it's a dollar or whatever, whoever donates money to this cause, he will put out in the newspaper an ad and list all the people's name. And it's amazing, each week, the list is growing bigger and bigger it is. and you know the amount of contributions that's coming in it's going to be significant because it's like oh that person donated you know if that person can donate and he feels that it's important then maybe I should too because you know I, I trust that person in donating that kind of money you don't know how many people are donating what kind of money but we know that the list is growing and each one is donating monies but the amount is kept confidential. Mm -hmm. But I think his effort is just tremendous because that came from his heart. He's paying for the ad out of his own I, pocket. I saw it in the paper. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I thought that was terrific. Yes. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so Lori, can you give us an idea about, you know, I, I know there are targets for the fundraising efforts. Yes. And maybe uh, you can help us understand that better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's benchmarks of funds we have to raise or else the program dies, it goes away. I, I actually, I have those here. Uh, by fiscal year 2009, it's coming right up in a few months, we need $50,000. We have in hand $18,700. By fiscal year 2010, we need $500,000. By fiscal year 2011, $525,000. And uh, we have to meet those benchmarks or this program goes away. Mm -hmm. This is very grassroots what we're doing, but we're hoping the momentum, it's going to move. We're going to do it. We're not seeing this as something that's going to fail. Right. 
and I think it's that kind of optimism actually that's very contagious. And you know, my understanding is just through discussions with, for instance, the Senator David Ige, who is our uh, chair for the Senate Health Committee, has informed uh, Josh Dwight and I that there may be a, a, a nonprofit that's also looking at at funding this, and so he or helping fund fund, wonderful. fund this. Yeah. Yes, wonderful. So we're wonderful. you know he, yeah. he's he's all very uh, supportive of the resolution to move out because he thinks that will also bring more focus onto the effort. But yeah. I, you know, I, I really commend you all for the efforts that you're doing. And I think, you know, by setting a target, it's mm -hmm. something that, you know, people can uh, understand and, and move to. So that, that's a terrific thing. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the other great effort that the Board of Trustees is doing is under the leadership of Julie Tulang, who has accepted to be the chairperson of our grants committee. Oh. And so what she's done is she's um, looked at all the different kinds of grants that are available. And there's a group of us who have either written or reviewed grants before who are now part of her committee. And so each one of us have um, kind of volunteered that we will do at least one or more grants to support this effort. And so um, one grant is going in before April 1st for about $50,000. What we want to do is furnish the entire clinic with furniture. This would be like uh, chairs, waiting, um, waiting room furniture, uh, conference room tables, this kind of stuff, which would cost approximately $50,000. So that first grant will be going out. It's all ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, every one of our committee members are either um, reaching out. I think one person reached out to Bob Lindsay in terms of a possibility of mm -hmm. a grant through OHA. Um, there's other people who have called to different uh, uh, nonprofit granting funding mm -hmm. sources. And so we're working with all entities. We're not just depending on one entity to fund the whole amount because it is a tremendous amount of money. But we need everybody's help to be able to reach that goal because mm -hmm. one entity cannot do it by themselves. So we're looking at the federal government, the state government, we're looking at county, we're looking at nonprofit organizations, individual donations. Mm -hmm. So it's again a team effort similar to our emergency room department renovations. We want everybody to buy into it and they become part owners of this new program that we have which mm -hmm. is very much needed in our community. There's just too many stories that we hear of mm -hmm. people who can't, you know, they have insurance, they have a good job and they can't find a physician in town. Mm -hmm. And you think that, oh, if they have insurance and if they're a school teacher, there shouldn't be any problem. Well, there is a big problem. And so when this kind of people who have insurance can't find a primary care physician, you know, can you imagine other people who aren't as lucky to have health insurance mm -hmm. being able to get in on a timely basis? Yes, yes. Uh, the, fish, the physicians we do have they're, they're exhausted and they're not taking any more patients. Yeah. Uh, like you said, if you do have insurance, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a scary position to be in when you can't find a physician or medical care. Right. But, uh, but I think, you know, what you all are doing in terms of, you know, supporting what well, previously we had Dr. Donovan, Jim Donovan and, mm -hmm. and Dr. Dolan on kind of explaining, and, and of course Josh Green, mm -hmm. explaining this whole need. And, but, you know, to see, that that message is going out and now your follow-up message of really trying to have everyone come together as a community yeah. to support this mm -hmm. effort you know I, I, I really uh, it's terrific and so this I, is a solution to the problem that's right. we got to work on the problem yeah. this is a solution right. and that's just mm -hmm. one one phase of a solution mm -hmm. but it's a big one and mm -hmm. I think um, we're very fortunate that we have people like Dr. Donovan, Dr. Linda Dolan, Dr. Santiago yes. who are busy in, in the work that they do, mm -hmm. who are willing to pitch in and help resolve this issue with us. Yes. And spending the time, you know, besides their regular work hours, right. to be able to come out to Honolulu, to be able to go out and meet with different community groups to explain what the situation is. And we're very fortunate to be able to have that kind of physician on our island. You know, June, I think to create the kind of success that yeah. you referenced earlier, it takes many hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, as you make all of these efforts in, um, you know, again, we all really appreciate, you know, what is being done. Um, public education becomes a key part of that. And yeah. this is so wonderful. <laughs> you know, this, this particular, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, yes. This interview, I, I'm thinking, wow, this is really great because it covers the entire aspect. And I enjoyed listening to what you guys had to say together with Dr. Dole and Dr. Donovan because mm -hmm. it's like creating the baseline of why this is important. And it goes out to our community. Yeah. You know? And I think it was with that thought that that resolution 